Tim Durham with DroneMappingTools.com and in today's short video I'm going to show you just how easy it is to process your PPK flights for doing a photogrammetry mission. So it really does not matter which software, which app you used to acquire your flights. If you have the Topo Drone PPK system added to your Phantom 4 Pro, your Mavic 2 Pro, and uh, coming up will be the, the Mini 2S, then I'm going to show you just how easy it is to process the data. So let's jump in. So we are now in the post-processing software, and this is used for both photogrammetry and LiDAR missions. So the first thing we're going to do, we're going to come in, we're going to select our images folder. I'm going to select, I've already got that. Now we're going to go to our drone GNSS. Let's go here, go to that folder, and it'll be the third flight. I actually had three flights. We're going to do the third one right here. And then... Our drone model is the Phantom 4 Pro. We're going to select our base station. Now, I have already downloaded the cores file, and I'll do a separate uh, short video showing you how to go and download your cores file. So if you do not have an on-site base and you're in the United States, there are cores stations all over the United States, and you can use those as a base. The fact is the Topo Drone PPK kits are dual frequency receivers, L2 receivers. So you can have a long baseline for doing your PPK processing. When you have an L1, for instance, the MLID M+, that is a single frequency, very good receiver, by the way, but it is a single frequency, and so your baseline is very short. You're only allowed a very short baseline for doing PPK. Our base data is, let's go here, let's go to cores. It's going to be this one right here. Okay, that is it. We have told it that we want, by putting this checkbox in here, we're saying post-process your GNSS data. Here we want to update the images, and it will not edit your original images. It will actually create a copy, and it will update those and put them in a subfolder. So I want to hit projection. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stay with ellipsoid height. When I bring this in to Pix4D, then I can edit that and transform it over to geoid at that point. So I'm going to come down, we're going to do ellipsoid, I'm going to come to USA, so we're going to do UTM, and I'm going to stay with UTM 16 North, that's my zone. And by the way, to know which date and time frame that you need to download, this right here, when you look at th these two lines right up here in this top right hand corner, that tells you that the drone data starts on the 3rd at 2131 hours. This is UTC time or GPS time for all practical purposes. When you go, and I, let me just switch over and show you that. That date is going to be, that was on the 23rd, so it's going to be this date. We know that it said it started at 2100 hours. So I come down and I say my start time is that the start time was at 2131. When you are downloading course files in the US, it is done in even hours. So I need to back up and start it at 2100 hours. And you see that this goes to 2200 hours in 47 seconds. But I'm going to do 2100 and I'm actually going to do a two hour time frame to encapsulate this entire because it rolled over past the hour. I need to go over one more hour because your base file, it needs to cover the entire duration of your rover file, which is on the drone. I would switch over here and I'd say start at 2100 and I would go for a duration of two hours and pick a site. My core site is ZME1. This is the closest one to me. All signals, I'll do that and I'm going to say get cores data. And that's all there is to downloading the base station file. And again, I will do another video to show you how to go in and find the different core stations and cover that. So we are now ready to go. You know how to find your time frame for your course file. I'm going to hit start. It'll take just a few minutes. And when this is done, I'm going to show you where Pix4D thought the original images were and show you where Pix4D knows the PPK images to be just before we even start the processing. It is pretty amazing how much error there is when you use the onboard GNSS receiver on any of the standard drones. So you take the Phantom 4 Pro, which is actually uh, about to finish, I think DJI is doing their last production run on that now, and or has completed the last production run. The Mavic 2 Pro, 
And now the the 2S, the 2S can become a very powerful PPK drone for doing your mapping. So this is now done, it's complete. So I'm gonna go ahead and close this out. And I am going to show you, there's that one and that one. What you're seeing here is the images that we're just using the onboard GPS data. And you can see where Pix4D put the, this is again, before it's done any processing. All I did was bring the images in. It said, this image is right here. This is the PPK location of that particular image. That is, that is a big difference. We're not talking about inches. We're talking about a number of feet. And, and so another issue that you run into, it, it's not that it is consistently wrong. So your images that you bring in using the onboard GNSS receiver, all of the images are off, but each one is off different in different uh, in the XY plane and in elevation. So they are that creates a lot of error in your end result. And yes, you can take um, uh, GCPs and try to tighten that up, but they only get tight right where the GCPs are, and then the error begins to creep up. As the further you move from that ground control point, the error increases. And so even here, this one you can see is, this is where it's located here. This is in the one, two, three, four, five, right between the fifth and sixth line of these panels. I think these are uh, four by eight uh, aluminum sheet panels on top of the roof. One, two, three, four, five, six. We're in the seventh, but then we move over to the second panel. So I mean, it's almost eight feet off in that direction. Now you come down here, you can see this one, this way, here we are. Again, there is just a lot of error in the image location. So I hope this is helpful. That is how easy it is for the Topo Drone processing software to update your images and bring them into your photogrammetry software of choice. If you have any questions, please let me know. You can visit dronemappingtools.com. If these videos are helpful, then please subscribe. If you want to see specific content, if you have questions or maybe a, a tutorial that you want to see, then drop a message down below. Let me know what that is, and we'll try to make a video that will help not only you, but other people out there trying to learn and improve their workflow for photogrammetry. See you in the next video.